what's effortless to you is priceless to somebody else. And that's Bernie Petrie who taught me that. And it's one of her sayings. Bernie Petrie is my spiritual mentor over in North Berwick. And today is Ben's Business Podcast episode number 62 and on how to develop self-belief and overcome our self-critical voice in our head or kind of old self how um, past failures traumas that are, are holding us back and pushing through that and developing this realization of how great we really are because everyone's got greatness within them and genius within them but without realizing that you can never really push through what you've done in your past so how do we push through that that's what i want to try and help uh, push you through today so Really, realize how great you are. That's the first point is the, we shouldn't have to wait for feedback to know how good we are. We, we, we have to be independent, or independent of the good or bad opinions of other people because if we wait for that, people, aren't, people actually find it difficult to give uh, acknowledgement and uh, be show that they're grateful for you. People hide their emotions. So that's a very difficult part to get the, the positives. The negatives are almost easier to receive from people because people just like to tell you what you've done wrong. And so we need to develop that way of self-esteem for ourselves so we can go, oh, I'm actually quite a good person. Like I'm actually quite good at this. And I struggle from low self-esteem. I think everyone has in, at any point in their life, unless about the absolute perfect dream uh, childhood and and being developed that way um, but most times 99 percent of us all have some problems with low self-esteem so how do we get get through that i just wanted to share some experiences that uh, the last week with uh, with you i was explaining i, I go, jump on a weekly call with my friend ver and i was exp explaining a day to him and i realized like how kind of how i was riding the wave of momentum which you get from when you have one success then you get another success then you start your confidence starts to build and you seem to just be riding this wave of doing really great things over and over and how do we stay on that wave as long as possible is is another question so i got some so again you can receive this from other people's opinions you definitely can but we must learn to realize that in ourselves as well. One of the ways that I received it today from, other, not today, but this week from other people was when I put my post up recently about uh, how I'd been doing a 5K run weekly uh, for the Kirkcaldy Park Run and it's the, the park run organization around the UK and encouraging people to join in this community park run for, for a five uh, for a 5k run and fitness and sport and health has always been kind of a big focus or just a, a hobby of mine football has always been a hobby of mine so i've always been pretty fit throughout my life and i've never quit i've never stopped football i stopped football for maybe there was one period where I felt like I'd lost my fitness slightly for maybe three months, my whole life. I started playing football when I was six years old and I got addicted to it and I never, never turned back from that. So when I did the 5K run, I invited my mum along who did it before and I was invited by my friend uh, Sam Forsberg who's been doing uh, lots of them as well. And the feedback I got from like my time that I got from, from my first run on the five, 5K park run it was just uh, like phenomenal feedback that I kind of forgot that I have really good fitness and uh, ability to, to run fast around uh, over long distance. And I think because of uh, all my personal development as well, it's helped me with the mindset for a long distance run, which is a lot of mindset stuff because in a sprint, you can just sprint and you don't, you're, you're completely in flow and you don't have to think, but there's certain points in a long distance run where uh, as people talk about in marathons and things, it's a it's a mental battle. It's a battle in your mind on what where your focus goes. If your focus starts to go on, I'm feeling sick, which I did on what, all three of the runs I've done so far in the park run. And on the last hill, there's points where I really did feel like uh, being sick, and I had to take my focus away from that very quickly. And I kind of realized that 
my personal development has played a big part in, in helping me do better in that run because my focus might have went to raw, towards the negative of, of that and instead of what I actually want to achieve and get a good time and, and finish this run. So I got myself back on track on that focus. So that was just one example and I, then I did a, a post about it and people I told people the time. I actually originally didn't include my time in that post and then I edited it in because I didn't want to be egotistical, I didn't want to show off or tell people how great I am. I, I tend to resist that receiving any, uh, I tend to resist, um, I want to stay humble, That it's probably I avoid bragging. So I actually didn't post it with my time in and then I decided to edit it because that could be a source of inspiration for other people, which I'm very glad I did because lots of people gave me really good feedback which made me feel really good about myself so thank you everyone who commented on that post and uh, you have no idea what like comments like that can can do for someone and on top of like my own belief in realizing after getting that great time and realizing it myself getting that on uh, additional feedback is really helpful uh, for giving people more self-confidence and I think what happened from the back of that um, and realizing um, I, I pushed through that limit of when I, when I explained on the, 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 the last hill that I pushed through. So I was, what I was doing there was I was, it was a moment of truth. It was either I stopped the running or I'm, like I focus on wanting to give up or I, I identify that kind of negative pull on my mind where, it's, where my focus is starting to go. And then I have to get focused back on the step that I'm taking and get back on that run and stay focused on that to think about the finish line or whatever you want, the positive that you want to focus on, the end result. And then push through the expectations, the limits of what other people have, which a lot of people may, maybe have, would have stopped at that moment that I felt this massive barrier and bursting through it bursting through my old self because my old self might have just not had that personal development to that point to to go I'm just going to keep going I'm going to actually run faster which I did and I'm just going to get this this run done and so I was in a bit of pain to finish the run but that's just a good example of pushing through and you know what's happened from that one pushing through in that moment there getting a really good time um coming eighth in a run of 210 people uh, and doing a 5k in 20 minutes I got f amazing feedback and I've used that kind of feedback to to create that momentum that I've had to to want to go back and try to win the race and uh, do other things and re just realize really realize my own fitness and and do other things like walking up to the top of Arthur's seat which is a uh, uh, got to the summit of Arthur's seat which is um I've got some information about the, this how high that was it's a uh, 250 meter high or uh, 822 feet high hill uh, with my daughter my daughter on my shoulders the whole way up and the whole way down and some people were giving me kind of like a strange look on my way up that I was actually doing that um, and someone even mentioned to me on my way up that you you have some stamina so like this momentum is just growing and I, I've received that kind of feedback from the comments on my post then uh, I take it to the next level and I just take that, take that information that I received from my own self-esteem that I built when I did this pushing through the limit and then an additional second tier from people because it has to be a second tier, you have to have it internally first and then when people give you that feedback it's like the next, next step, the next level up of um, realizing how good you are. And then I, I did that, walked up to the top of Arthur's seat and walked back down. And I was knackered, but I, I wouldn't have probably considered even doing that before. And th there were so many limits to, for me to, to take my, uh, she's almost two, a two-year-old, my two-year-old daughter um, out to Edinburgh, climb up the, uh, an Arthur's seat with her on my shoulders and then back down. Obviously, I'll have to organize. Uh, I was planning out how I could feed her dinner and amongst all that, get home before uh, I was late for football and beat the rush hour. All these barriers to get through and just simply going ahead and doing it anyway and figuring it out 
and kind of uh, as my my friend Sam mentioned today on on the phone, I was doing a bit of research on this topic, how she's doing so well in her sixty six day challenge of waking up at four forty five for sixty six days. Uh, so she's her challenge is not four forty five. That's mine, and I've failed a couple of times, but Sam's actually powered right through from day one. She said she had a really strong why to go ahead and do it, and she basically said to me that. Failing was not an option. That there, there was it wasn't it wasn't optional. She has the discipline to 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 finish this right to the end, and she kind of has committed to that. She's on day forty five now, and she did tell me when I asked her a question about this: is uh, did you believe you could uh, do this? And she didn't believe she could get this far, but she said one of the reasons. So this is again this is how to overcome that obstacle is how much she has her focus and her vision, which is changing the world in a very bold, big way. So she's got a focus on that. And then when I asked her to join this challenge, it did scare her, but she went through anyway. So that brings me on to the next part is what got me to show up for that race in the first place? Because on the third race where I got my best, my personal best time, I was actually in my bed 15, 15 minutes before the race started. I just got myself out of bed up the road. And what it is is like different factors, like in my 66 day challenge, I've talked about the, the waking up early. I've got lots of factors for people. Accountability is a huge one because I knew my mum was going to be waiting for me up at the park. Sam knows that she's got to take a selfie in this group and share it with people and be awake. But it's not just the accountability, but it's her strong why, plus the accountability of the community um, wanting to inspire other people. So there's all you have to have these outer structures to, to make you power through the struggle of, of or the, the the negative thinking, the self-critical self, old self to uh, get, get yourself out of bed and just simply getting up, getting dressed, getting out the door and getting to the place you need to be or you've said that you're going to be and um, showing up for people. Like sometimes it can be for people, but it can also be known that like if you lie in bed, you're going to really, your self-esteem is going to take a, a big dip. Um, so there's, you have, have to have lots of factors built in, uh, lots of structures and outer structures built in to make things happen because if my mum wasn't waiting for me at that park run, that would have happened. And I wouldn't have this momentum that I've got just now from kind of doing that run, sharing the post, which took a lot of um, effort and kind of uh, resistance to posting that, especially posting my time and uh, trying to receive uh, feedback about that. And then... On top of that, going going up Arthur's seat wouldn't have happened, and all these other things, all these many successes that have been this many success that led to other successes, and lots of momentum happening right now, and and feeling kind of in my genius, riding that creative wave that I've talked about. Wouldn't I wouldn't be here if I didn't make that simple, slight decision? It's like the butterfly effect, how the the smallest when in the movie when he, he goes back and changes the slightest thing, it makes tremendous impact in the future like he ended up in prison um and in one of the instances um from like ch he changed how in the past he's seen the trauma of his dog being burned uh, he, he, by changing that so he didn't see that happening the future was massively impacted and that's it's these tiny decisions we make to stay in bed um to sleep in slightly to not make that extra call that can lead to a few, huge thing. I gave a good example. Like I went to a coffee shop today and I was just thinking if they weren't open today, like I would maybe have got fed up and that they, they're not open and often enough. And I, I would be a loyal customer to them. Um, it could be like, for example, a, a millionaire is coming into your shop today. And, and, you, and if you slept in by five minutes and they didn't make it in, they didn't come in. They didn't buy whatever they were going to buy. They didn't also refer their friends who would maybe buy, also be millionaires and, and buy the things. So that's just a good example of like how the tiniest decisions you make can make a huge impact. And you would lose what I've received to, this week is, is just this crazy amount of momentum. Because I went, going back to when I was explaining my day to my friend, is I, I, when I almost journaled, explained my day to him and, and uh, reflected on that, I realized how, m how much I was in my, my, my genius. And I realized, I, I kind of connected the dots and realized that's because of that moment that I 
realised my mum was going to be waiting for me and my friend Sam I, I could have been at the park run who invited me. Having people waiting for me there is my way, like accountability. That's why I created the accountability group for the, the, the wake up challenge. And you have to kind of find your outer structure that helps you get out of bed, get out the door and, and see what that, find out what that is for you. Because we are all different. We, we're motivated by different, for different reasons. Um, but we have to have uh, internal reasons like Sam's, our, our strong why, our strong definite major purpose, uh, or big, hairy, audacious goal. And that's your internal one. That's your, like, from visioning, which I've explained in a previous video. So having your vision very strong and putting the power in your in your vision every day is, is the most important thing you can do from step one is putting the power in your vision. Step two is having outer structures to make sure that, vision you're moving towards that vision and people are making sure you're moving towards that vision such as coaches and people waiting for you at, at the park and then when that kind of the gun goes off for the run that's me off I, i'm straight into my genius i was right there i decided i got competitive seen someone running past me so i ran past them and then, and then that was me all i needed to do was show up there um my hair was a mess i, I was just out of my bed i was tired i could not be bored with it but simply just getting myself into the start at the start line and going, that was that moment right there. That was the moment that set up all the other successes that happened this week. So I hope this video has inspired you to just show up, to just get your get focused on your vision, and also pull through those moments of truth where you're just pushing through that barrier that would normally hold you back, where you're just getting there, and then you decide, nah, uh, I want to stay in my bed." Just jump over that and and uh, trust me that those moments are the, the most important moments you can make in your life because they will have a massive impact in the future those daily decisions and that's how we build our our self-belief and 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 increase our self-esteem the best way to lower your self-esteem is to be in that moment and let your monkey brain take over and say i'm going to let everyone down that's waiting for me there um those customers can wait and i'm going to stay in my bed uh, to get a, to get that extra hour sleep or whatever like simple decisions like that can make a huge impact on your self esteem and even people's uh, belief in you um but when you power through that you can build belief in yourself and externally and have people pushing you and helping you on top of your own right ride, riding your own wave of uh, as Darren Hardy calls it, in the compound effect, big mo momentum. So thanks for watching. If anyone's got any questions about this topic of developing self-belief, let me know. And um, just remember what's effortless to you is priceless to someone else. So we've all got our unique genius within us and we need to tap into that every day uh, because if we find it and use it, we will create massive results, massive um things in their life so thanks for watching everyone